You're listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. Presented by CMH Heli Skiing and Fat Tire Amber Ale. Gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the Low Pressure Podcast. It's an honor to have you on. Welcome. Yeah, good to be here, Mark. Well, thank you for having me. So, so uh, I'm talking with uh, Jim uh, Nehus and Todd yeah. Bennett. Uh, Todd, you are, first of all, Jim, first of all, you are the gentleman who uh, basically shows people where to go, <laughs> for <laughs> lack of a, a better exa- explanation. Uh, would you like to well, give a little, little introduction I've, for yourself? I've been real happy to be able to do that over the years. Uh, gosh, it's been um, 35 years that I've been doing this. So, what, uh, what were you so doing? For, what were you doing before you were drawing ski maps? Well, I had a partnership in an ad agency for seven years, and then I um, I dissolved that and moved to Denver. And in Denver, why I uh, was struggling to find work as a freelancer. Um, uh, hopefully, I was uh, you know I was trying to pick up. Um, a little uh, paste up work and some some drawing here and there, you know. And I finally decided to look up Bill Brown and uh, knew that he did trail maps, and and that's what I really had a passion for was painting scenery. And I thought, well, perhaps he would have an overload, and I could uh, I could uh, help him out. So who 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 was that? What was his name? Bill Brown, the, uh, my predecessor, my. Bill Brown. So I was Enter. talking. I was talking to a friend today, and he mentioned his name. So I said, oh, "I'm doing this uh, this podcast episode with Jim. He basically painted every ski resort that you've seen." And he goes, "Oh, is his name uh, Bill? Right, Bill Brown." That's correct. And before him was Hal Sheldon. You know, and Hal was the uh, was the fellow that really got the uh, traditional trail map image started. You know, back in uh, back in the uh, '60s, so uh, uh, Bill kind of took over from him, and then I I uh, was fortunate enough to take over after after Bill. Was there any kind of uh, was it like a like a nice transition where it was like like master and apprentice and like a, a Jedi Padawan, ninja master, grasshopper? <laughs> was it that sort of a transition? I no, it was it was. It was really very uh, simple and straightforward. I mean, I just came in and and uh, and he reviewed my portfolio and we discussed uh, art and and our techniques and and uh, and he turned over a job to me uh, that he had a lot of time on. And he said, "Well, you know, uh, if this doesn't work out, well, I'll still have enough time to to paint this scene." And uh, he sent it home with me, and I spent about thirty days on it. And it's just a little inset for for a winter park, and uh, I brought it back, and uh, and he really liked it. And uh, you know, I did everything that I could to mimic Bill's techniques, and and uh, so when it was taken up to the client, why Bill presented it, I hadn't signed it yet uh, on purpose, you know, and uh, Bill. Uh, showed it to them, and they they thought it was his work. And uh, Bill brought it back, and I signed it, and and uh, that was my first first uh, trail map image. See, so didn't you didn't sign it just in case? They're like, oh, this isn't up to snuff. You're like, <laughs> hey, it was him. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know why I didn't sign it. I I I, I don't know if uh, I I don't know why. Not um, quite not quite confident enough yet. It's your first one, right? So maybe maybe that little bit of fear or, or something not confident in those days no no so, in fact I, I remember a time that i was walking down the hallway uh, in behind the the uh, client and uh and and it, it was bail personnel and uh and he and he said well i hear you're the new uh or, or how did he word it anyway he said uh i hear you're the new trail map guy and i actually looked around my shoulder to see where the guy was <laughs> I mean, um, I who, who me? I found myself in a in a spot where I was uh, unfamiliar with, you know, and uh, and it was a good spot. So did you know, like right away, like oh, cool, I got this, I got a little bit of work, 
You know, was it just kind of like that thought? Like, oh, I got a bit of work. This is kind of fun and interesting. Or was it like when you did that first one of Winter Park, was it like the passion that it hit you? Like, oh, I want to do more of these. I need to do more of these. Oh, I had a passion for, for scenery before then. You, you have to understand, I'm, I wasn't a skier. I was an artist and, and, and am an artist, I should say. And so my passion was scenery, not necessarily skiing. Uh, but I learned on the job. I could ski. And I uh, got to be an intermediate skier that skied with some fear on intermediate slopes. I, I'm not trying to find the out of bounds or anything. I, I stay on those nice groom trails. So I'd like to know kind of some of your some of your history. Like where where are you from originally? Well, originally I'm from Loma, <clears throat> Colorado, which is outside of Fruita, which is near Grand Junction, Colorado. It's on the western slope, just uh, west of the Continental Divide, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I grew up in canyon lands and mountains and uh, and, and high plains, um, so it's very diverse. And, and I and I started painting scenery uh, in my teens, and uh, and and just really uh, got into it. You know, I, I I was in wonderful scenery, and and all of it was uh, um, something that I wanted to get down on paper. God's country, right? So did you ever um, like branch off into like uh, photography or anything like that as well? Well, uh, in, in my early career, I, uh, I worked for an auto, after auto, aftermarket automotive company. And uh, they, they uh, manufactured uh, tech, tachometers and um, um, gauges and different things. And so in there, I did a lot of uh, drawing of instruments and uh, and and also I learned how to how to be a printer and and uh, ran a print shop for a while. So I knew a lot of the background of what was necessary to produce a a good image and what what was needed to to bring out the uh, the contrast and everything. In those days, they didn't have a computer, you know. So. And you had to kind of know what the cameras are going to do to what your colors would end up after they were printed. And, um, and, and so I, I knew that fairly well and it did help me early on. Um, if you look back at some of my paintings, the early ones were, were painted differently than I paint them today. You know, just the colors, the, the color palette and so forth and the contrast. So, uh, today we, uh, you can do so much more with a computer and control your colors and your contrast and your, uh, uh, even the, uh, even the features, you can change the features and pretty much whatever you want to do. But I, but I still feel that today the, the best way to illustrate a ski area is by hand painting it. You just get more of the feel of nature. You get more of the, uh, uh, the ambience of, of the ski uh, slopes and and the light on the slopes and so forth. Uh, I'm not I'm not uh, uh, cloning trees and putting them here and there. You know I'm individually individually painting each tree. So uh, so it's a lot more natural. That's fascinating. So have you have you like with the transition from from the traditional way to the new way with the computers and all that sort of thing? Have you? I guess, lost any work or have you found that people are like, Hey, you know, we're going to do it this way. Or have they asked you, can you render it through the computer? Like, have you done work like that? I haven't. No, I, I have not rendered with a computer. I, I could never come up with a good reason to do that. Uh, uh, it'd take me longer to do it on the computer than to do it by hand. I think, uh, <laughs> right. You got to learn how to work the dang would, thing first. Freedom. I have much more freedom without that computer there. So, the, the computer aids me a great deal in, in uh, maybe, uh, uh, well, it, 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 once it's scanned and put in the, the file is in my computer, then I can come back and I can go in and change a few colors or touch up things, you know. Mm, yeah. Uh, and, and the computer's done a great thing in, in just the moving the job along, you know, from start to finish. 
uh, your communication with a client uh, is, is much improved. Uh, it's it's easier to send them to send them a proof by via email rather than the hey come over to my house next week, right? Yeah, well, I right in the very beginning, I would uh, make blueprints. The, the sketches are 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 done to size, and in, in those days, it, it, the reason was was because I would need to blueprint it and send it out to the client mail and they would look at it they would mark on it what they want to change and then they'd send it back to me and then i would take that that uh, sketch and and transfer the image directly to the drawing board and uh so that's why my sketches were so large in those days and and they're and i continue to to produce large sketches for approvals all right. So you, you you mentioned you mentioned start to finish. So I'd love to know kind of what the process is from start to finish. If you can, even if it takes like 10, 15 minutes, explain this for me. So say I have just uh, figured out some sort of device that the entire world needs. It's a brand new invention. And I'm all of a sudden the world's richest man. And uh, to indulge my ego and my needs and wants, I go and buy myself a mountain. And I'm going to have this mountain, uh, basically I'm going to have the foresters come through and cut ski runs, and I'm going to create the Low Pressure Podcast mountain, or Mark Warner's mountain. But I need a trail map, right? It's going to be free for all. It'll be like, uh, it'll be like a, everyone's going to be allowed to come Whenever they want. It's going to be the biggest one ever. It's the best place you've ever seen. So, and I need a ski map done. So I call up Jim. Hey, Jim, I got a project for you. What happens All right. next? What happens next? Well, hey, you got to dream thing, big, man. You got to dream big. Well, of course, what I would do uh, in my process has always been this way from the very first day is to uh, review it with a client and then come up with a uh, with a quote so he knows what he's paying for it and and, um, and then I would uh, supply him with some thumbnails to let him know what I'm thinking about uh, without giving away too much and thumbnails know. being like little small little small paintings or small versions yeah. of, of the bigger um, and just outline sketches so that you can get an idea of what direction I'm looking at it how I'm placing the slopes and and uh, just get a general idea of, of, of what I've got in mind. Now, may um, I ask you, once I, sorry to interrupt you there, oh, I think a few steps back, do you have to go visit the site yourself? I saw you have a little video on your YouTube channel or your, your little YouTube video um, where you're kind of, you got a camera in your hand. I think you're in a helicopter in one scene. Like, is that <laughs> even before you get to that point? You're like, hey, I need to go and see what I'm working with? Well, no, I would always get a third up front before I'd ever uh, take on a project. <laughs> and, um, and once I start up front, then, then I'm on the clock, you know, and, and I'll, uh, I'll come out and visit. Um, and there's a lot of mountains that don't have the budgets to visit, so they would send me aerial photography that I've directed someone at their, one of their personnel to do. And uh, if I visited this site, I would come up and 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 then ski it and uh, and um, have a, a photo flight set up and and thoroughly photograph it from starting at uh, uh, two thousand feet above the summit and work my way down and get uh, passes across uh, for different perspectives and then lower the plane to to uh, the level of the summit and and get all the detail of the upper mountain and then i would even drop the plane to uh, mid mid mountain level and photograph all the uh, lower mountain and the base and uh, once those photographs were taken then i could review them with a client and we could discuss different things maybe some uh, uh, particular areas on the mountain that he wanted to show a little better than others, or, or maybe he has problems uh, um, getting the skiers to understand where they're going. And uh, so that would be one of my jobs is to clarify that through the trail map. And, um, <clears throat> and once I uh, reviewed it with him, then I would go ahead and return home 
uh, sit down in the shop and and um, go ahead and do the sketch. The, and it's a very detailed sketch. I I, uh, I show everything, uh, the, even the tree shadows and, and all the shading and everything. So you would and, go? Would you go and like reference the photos as to like, all right, the sun is over here, so oh, the yeah. shadows are going to be here. And then would you take those photos and like put them on the wall? And then reference them so you know you know what contour this slope is and all that sort of thing. Would you like create kind of a uh, a map no, on the wall from the photos? No, not really. Uh, what I would do is uh, uh, have a blank sheet of paper in front of me, and uh, I would get out their old trail maps and get out topo maps and get out um, um, all the aerials that were uh, a, a full view and. I would just hold the photographs in my hand and, and look at it and and design the lift uh, pods in the correct place and allow enough places for the runs to be put in. And then I would start referring to the photographs and, and drawing in certain sections of the mountain. Uh, because many times I'm, I'm drawing a, map, a, a slope that's uh, completely out of view from the perspective that I'm painting. So, uh, so I would be, um, uh, you know, painting a, a section over here from a photograph that that, that is uh, uh, shot from um, 130 degrees over on this side, while the view is is over here. And so yeah, that's um, that's an interesting point that I never really thought about before because all of the trail maps you draw them 3D, but they're basically you're looking at it like a two dimensional image, but you've got to make sure that this three-dimensional mountain is kind of displayed. So it's almost as if you're showing 270 degrees of, of this mountain and then the back bowl, there's like those, those little inserts, I guess, right? Like, is that one of the biggest challenges yeah. is trying to show everything even though it's physically not how it works? Oh, definitely it is. Um, the And that's another reason why the computer doesn't work so well is because you have to, uh, you have to distort so many different perspectives to get the trails to line up like they're going to ski so that if a skier comes and is referencing your map, it, nothing looks out of proportion. Everything looks natural. Everything looks right. And uh, he isn't surprised by a uh, stretch somewhere to put in the backside, you know. Um, and you mentioned uh, 270 degrees. You know, I painted them 360 degrees. And uh, you just Mount Bachelor just recently, I've shown all their slopes in one view. And they used to take two or three or four to do that. Now, is that like, I can, I, I can almost only imagine, do you have a, do you have like a math degree as well? Or like a geometry <laughs> degree or, or like you get the protractor out, but you just try and, cause it's, you just oh. basically you're, you're unfolding, right? That's that. I find that, that fascinating. Well, that particular uh, in, um, uh, project was what I what I refer to as satellite views. You know, it's basically a, a straight down shot. But what I do is is uh, is pull in some of the forward mountain and put in a perspective that's more natural and not so straight down. Yeah. And uh, and I and, and in those in those scenes, I don't put in a horizon. You know, so the the skier knows that he's looking down on the mountain and not looking across horizontally like the traditional trail maps usually are. Yeah. So, so you, you're in the airplane, you're taking all these photos. You didn't mention that the next step, you said the next step is I take, I go home. You didn't say you get on the mountain and then ski it just to see how it flows. Is that part of it as well? Well, I, no, I didn't mention that I got on the mountain and skied it. You know, usually before I fly it. Oh, so beforehand, yeah. Kind of, yeah, yeah. It, it's a if I'm if it's a complicated mountain, I want to get around the mountain and and see just what uh, I might look at from the air to to uh, clarify. Yeah, build in, so, build in a few lift tickets into the end of the package and a few room nights, right? The whole reason I started this podcast is so I can talk about skiing and maybe get some discounts and some deals, right? <laughs> Perhaps I, that might be the same thing. Little yes, little no. Oh yeah, yeah, surely. You know, but again, 
you know, I was never an avid skier. But I'm so, sure I'm sure you like a nice fireplace and a I, ski and a lodge in a beautiful I, place with the lady, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. Do you still now? Do you still now every once in a while go to back to one of these resorts that you have painted in the past and say, "Hey, it's Jim. You got a spot for me?" <laughs> no, I don't. I no. would. You never hurts to shoot your shot, there, Jim. <laughs> But that's the difference. You're an avid skier, and I'm I'm an avid artist. Well, you can so, always say, "Hey, I feel like I'd like to do uh, a residency for the week next week, and uh, we'll paint you something nice for the paint you something nice for the lobby, and then uh, hook me up with some ski passes in a week, a, a few nights in the in the hot tub." Well, there is one instance where I I really did pursue another uh, trip down, and that was to Turtle Island, Fiji. Oh wow. Uh, I got one down there, and I, I uh, painted their 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 island uh, much like a ski resort, showing all their different amenities and so forth. And and we had such a great time, uh, Dora and I. And so uh, it, it was within six months after that. I think, hey, you know, I could go down and do some paintings too. And uh, and we did get another trip out of that. So yeah, that works. It, what's <laughs> easier, palm trees or <laughs> pine trees? Well, uh, pine is a lot easier than palm trees. The paint from a uh, from above. Uh, that's a that's really cool too. I think I'd like to see some more of those like island island you know drawings like the because I've been to Fiji as well and there's so many of those little resort islands that would be. Oh yeah, there is. Is it's that the like, next transition? Is to uh, move into the more warmer tropical climates and get invited down for mai tais no. by the beach. No, I've always been a landscape painter, and I've always liked the American scenes. And uh, so I'm really kind of interested now in, in sketches of, uh, 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 I guess I'd call them great American outdoor scenery. And uh, uh, outdoor because a lot of times there's a lot of hiking trails and so forth. Um, in fact, if I, could, if I could turn this camera around, I'll, uh, I'll sh just show you one. Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's see. Uh, how do I do this now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. I should do it. If it didn't, just a minute. <laughs> I'm not a techie. That's all right. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go. well, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to turn it like this. Oh, there you go. And there. This is uh, Yellowstone. And... Uh, you know what I really am trying to do in these is is to it's a landscape, but but I just have this tendency to map, and so I'm I show a lot more than 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 any other photograph would ever show you. Um, in this particular one, you see the lower falls, and in this perspective you could not see the upper falls and I put it in and also in the distance is the Grand Tetons, which you can't really see, but they are there. And that makes the whole scene uh, very, very real in that way. And it is, it, it, it gives the people a, uh, the viewer, a, a grand view that they can't get any other way. And, uh, and then I come in and put in the, hike, the hiking trails, if there's hiking trails. And so, uh, you know, I hope people can look at these and, and say, I was right on that trail, right, right there, you know. And, and so, uh, and the view is magnificent. I hope it'll bring back memories. And I, I'm, uh, I'm, I've painted or I've sketched out now uh, uh, 12 of them. And I've got a list of forty-five or fifty. <laughs> will that so be? Will that there. be for the next for the next book? Uh, that uh, might be. Todd, are you there? Yeah, so I we think got, Todd could maybe. Uh, yeah, so put, joining us as well, we have Todd Bennett, who is. Uh, well, why don't you tell us what uh, what you do with what you do for Jim, or what's the relationship between you guys? Well, I, I think uh, the relationship is fanboy, um, you know, so uh, a big fan of Jim's work. And, 
you know, the quick story for me was uh, I kind of go on a storm chase every year and we were ended up in central Idaho, halfway between Salt Lake and Whistler on a trip. And uh, we're skiing at Tamarack Ski Resort in Idaho. I had never heard of it until you're kind of driving by and figured we'd pop out and ski for a couple hours. And I was looking at the map and lo and behold, the map looked the same as just about every map I've ever seen. And I see Jim's signature in the bottom and I pull out my phone and look him up and, you know, had that same kind of epiphany that you did, Mark, that there's one guy behind all of this. And so I, uh, I, I, I sent out an email to Jim at his AOL account and basically said, you know, long time listener, first time caller kind of thing. And boy, it, it'd be really cool to put together a book of your life's work. And that's, that's how Jim and I got started. And you know, Todd, uh, when that was, it was tomorrow will be the, the, uh, Four years. Fourth and oh, no kidding. Email. Wow. Yeah. Four so, years later, here we are. That's right. Yeah. So it must've been just after that, that, that trip. So um, yeah, to speed the story up a little bit, um, Jim and I got to know each other and got to know, I got to know Jim and his wife and he got to meet my, my family. And um, we said, well, let's do this book. Let's do this book thing. And uh, we launched it on Kickstarter, hoping to get a couple hundred copies pre-sold and, we had uh, almost 6,000 copies sold before we really even had much beyond the concept for the book. So raise. Yeah, that was what, a year, year ago or so? I think we wrapped Kickstarter in, I think it was October, 2019. So just about two years ago, a little over two years ago. Does that seem right, Jim? It's gotten a little fuzzy. Yeah. I, I, as Jim knew, I was, uh, I was getting in uh, and probably getting a little over my skis uh, on, on the whole project. Cause I'd never published a book, never written a book, never had a really a marketing or, uh, e-commerce business. What's your, what's your background? Like, what, what do you do? For, what's like, what's, yeah, my, what's my day game? job? I work for, um, Disney and our theme parks in California. So, uh, okay. And you, and you were just like, you know what, I'm going to publish, a, <laughs> publish a book. The shoot your shot, right? Everybody's got an idea, and it's just a matter of whether you follow through it or not. That's a brilliant idea. It's one that I wish I had come up with. To be yeah, honest. I mean, just very, very lucky. Obviously, Jim's got great material. Um, Kickstarter ended up being much better than we thought, right? You know, we had we had uh, almost six hundred thousand dollars raised right out of the gate, and so we went from thinking on a really small project, a small scale, to you know, having publishers reach out and say, Hey, we, we would love to publish this book. And we said, great, cool. Take us through the numbers. And we go through the numbers and we're like, well, where'd all the money go? You know, like, like, you know, they have like, yeah, well, how about a dollar a copy? And we're like a dollar a copy. <laughs> we did all the work. We So, so long story short, we ended up finding a great printer in Italy called Graphicom. Um, and uh, with, we just started ordering literally shipping containers of books. My partner, Ben Farrow, and co-founder with Open Road Ski Company, was at the press for the original printings and got to see it come off the press and bound. And then we um, we shipped them into the U.S., um, set up a small Amazon store, and then um, helped Jim kind of rebuild his website. And so that's where we've sold it. And uh, our sixth printing is getting loaded up uh, in the ports in Italy right now, about to come over, and that'll take us darn close to 100,000 copies. Holy moly. And have you sold a hundred thousand almost? Uh, right around 80,000. Yep. Uh, wow. Congratulations. Done. That is a really fa- That's fantastic. I didn't realize it'd be that many, but nice. Yeah. It's, it's been fun. Yeah. I, I'd say, you know, it's the, I was just going to say, you know, the, and the cool thing is, you know, Jim's painted in so many different countries. So, you know, we'll, we've just, and, and with the power of what you can do with internet ads, you just target uh, skiers in Australia and lo and behold, skiers in Australia want his book. And so we now actually have a distribution partner in Australia where we sell on Jim's website and they ship direct in Australia and they get, they get it out fast. We've, sh- we've sold books in Japan and Mexico and we've tested a bunch of folks. Canada is a great market. Um, a lot of passionate skiers in Canada. We ship directly out of uh, uh, Ottawa, I think is our, our shipping center up there. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. So it's Jim, have you, so let's get to some of the places like majority of your paintings, I'm sure in the United States. Um, but how many countries have you painted like ski resorts in? Oh, I, I don't think I really took account, but, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, um, uh, Chile, 
And uh, what about Europe? Many European destinations. The only the only Europe uh, destination was uh, in uh, <laughs> um, just to say I came. And, uh, I'm sorry. That's yeah, all right. Serbia. <laughs> in, in, in Serbia. Serbia. Right so yeah, is yeah. there is there a guy that does this in is there like a European gym? Uh, or do they do computer stuff? Like how does it work over there? Well, there certainly is a European artist over there, you know, and, and he has his own style. And have and, you met have you met this counterpart of yours? Uh, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. That would be an interesting conversation to be a fly on the wall for, I think, as long as he speaks English or you speak yeah. I- Italian yeah. or something, whatever. <laughs> well, I did have a, a fellow from uh, Finland come by. He had a job in the United States and uh, looked me up and we we uh, had coffee and discussed uh, trail maps. And uh, he, he did a very fine job up there in his part of the country. That's cool. So... Uh, we didn't quite get finished with the the process, so I've I've bought this mountain because I'm now the richest man in the world and I can afford this. And you've just done a couple laps in the airplane. You've done a few. You've you done a few. You're the richest man. Pardon me. The first thing I'll do is double my price. Then, if you're the richest man in the, uh, and then I'd give you a bonus on top of that because I can, right? <laughs> Right. It's all about giving, all giving, right. it's all about giving back, Jim. So <laughs> you've done a couple laps in the airplane. You've skied the terrain a little <laughs> bit. You've spent a few nights by the fireplace with a nice glass of scotch or whatever you'd like. Tested the hot tub with the, with the wife. And now you're back home with all of these photos. Um, what's the next step? Well, the next step is putting it together, of course. And I think I was covering some of that, but, uh, oh, with the sketches. Yep. Mm-hmm so forth and the sketch is then sent out to the client and the client will review it it'll come back to me <clears throat> and uh and i'll transfer that image directly onto the board that's going to be painted so that everything is exactly as approved how big is the board how big are these paintings uh, usually 30 by 40 inches a small area i'll do at a half size but the large areas are all 30 by 40 inches. And these images will then be enlarged up to signage that goes on the map. Do you have, do you keep all the originals or do you send those to the, uh... I do. I, I've got flat files here, uh, just stacked up with them. So really, would you ever consider selling any of them? Like at, at an auction, you'd be like, all right, I'm ready to retire. The book sales were good. But I want to go to the. I want to get up to the like Mark Warner level, richest man in the world level. I'm going to sell all my maps off. Would you ever consider selling them, or is it kind of like a legacy well, item for yourself? Or, well, yeah, I, I've considered it, and we're we're uh, uh, in the process of uh, seeing how that can be done. And uh, because uh, I'm going to retire, and and uh, you know, I would like these maps to land in hands that uh, that uh, that appreciate them and uh, uh instead of just uh, in these flat files they don't get much much uh much exposure in these flat files They're just gaining value it's a retirement <laughs> fund i hope you got that insured man <laughs> yeah you know, fireproof safe well i make sure that uh that the house is uh uh very well kept. And- <laughs> yeah. Um, would you would you consider like I guess I guess it would just come down to, I guess putting a price on them and would you offer them like maybe through like a like a, an auction house or would you just go straight to the resort and say hey this is the original is this something that you'd be interested in uh, to display well, in the resort I, you know and, and it's still in discussion uh, Todd and Ben and I are, are kicking around kicking this around so. Um, you know, I, I uh, we've got a little uh, a plan, and and we're getting in the initiated, and so we see we'll see how it goes. Now, so are you? Obviously, you have the originals. Um, so the original, obviously, is, is your property. But are you allowed to? So say say you wanted to make prints of them, 
or say sell posters online. Say like mm. I live I live at the base of Whistler Blackcomb. And if you were to like are you allowed to license them? Like do you have that that permission if you just wanted to scan them and sell like, you know, like the poster behind me, you know, right. I got in France, it's a traditional poster size. You know, if I could buy a Whistler trail map, which to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever seen a poster with like the map of that mountain, would you cons- would you be able to do that based on the agreements that you have with these mountains? I do have that agreement. I own the copyright and I license the use to them for that image. And then they can put on their copy, their logos, whatever they want to, and they can copyright that with the image. Excellent. So that might be oh. the next step there, Todd, is the posters. No, yeah, we're already doing them. Yes. <laughs> on the site. <laughs> Are they? Are do you have any that are ready to go at the moment? Yeah, we've got about a hundred uh, images for sale on jamesnews dot com. You can get them in four different sizes. We've got framing options, and uh, the, the sketch series that Jim was talking about, we're going to roll that out this uh, spring, summer, and fall, and you know we'll kind of see what the response is. And you talked about you know another book or how do we kind of get broader? And, and the nice thing, the great thing about the um, you know, running his own site and driving a lot of traffic there is, you know, the, the customers will tell us what they're looking for. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, Jackson is one of our top selling prints. Whistler is another top selling art print. So you get a really good sense of what people want. And um, yeah, Whistler is a beautiful image. We'll get you one, Mark. Happy to send one your way. Yes, please. Don't do you. So I know specifically, so with, um, we'll get back to the process soon. We're almost, we're about halfway, but like for, for instance, for Whistler, I've been here 20 years and I've seen a lot of changes. A lot of uh, chairlifts come in, chairlifts are taken out. Um, you know, they just added, they got rid of the wizard in the, in the solar coaster chair, which to the chagrin of most people who live here, which is a terrible idea, Vail, uh, terrible idea. Uh, but they put in a gondola. So, you know, things move. The, the, the mountain moves around, trees get cut down, new lifts get put in. Now, do these ski companies come back to you and say, hey, we've adjusted how the mountain is. Can you fix this or would you have to go and do a whole new map? Because it like sure. when you go to the computer, right, you can easily take things out and just adjust based on the, the changes. But when you do it by hand, like do you have to paint a whole new map? Uh, no, I do not. Um, I just got through uh, adding on to Lake Louise, Canada, uh, a whole new uh, uh, front side, uh, the northern half, which opened up the, I think it's the North Bowl up there. And uh, so I would just take and, and lift the paint off. That's why I use watercolor. So I lift the paint off by wetting it and that, and and just removing that and uh, repaint that area. Off of the original? Right. Really? Hmm. That's or, that, or or if it's a case where there's some added on, uh, I will take and paint that portion, and then merge it on in the files in the computer files. Mm-hmm. That sounds like it might be might be easier. I don't know much about um, uh, paint or or, <laughs> or pretty much the majority of paintings that I know are Bob Ross sort of things. <laughs> you know, all right, yeah, ha- happy yeah. little trees. Have you do you have you met him? No, I haven't, man. No. no, happy little trees, and you paint a lot of trees. So another thing that I think about when I see like trail maps and things like that, and the detail and the thousands, millions of trees you've probably painted, is uh, the Where's Waldo books. <laughs> have, yeah. Yeah. have you ever considered? Hmm. Uh, have you ever considered doing a fun little uh, kind of Where's Waldo style map with a few little fun little things painted in or, or have you ever done a map and just painted something in without telling anybody that it's just for you? There's like maybe a little Sasquatch in the trees or something or like, you know what I mean? Do, have you, do you little put little Easter eggs in your paintings? No, uh, no, I don't. I, I keep it very serious. I keep it very map like. Um, I, I, the only, the only thing that I do remember doing was adding a few palm trees in a ski area at the request of the, of the uh, people at the ski area. Oh, which they, one? Which one? Or do I have to go through the book what, and find it? <laughs> no, it, it was uh, Purgatory, Colorado. And I don't know if they still have it or not, but they would have these little uh, areas where they'd set up uh, things for kids. 
you know, a little run through the trees or something. So they wanted a little palm tree wherever this was. I like it. I, I, I want to, I want who, if, if someone's listening to this and you're going to commission a painting from Jim, just put like a little, a little Sasquatch or maybe even like a little low pressure podcast desk somewhere in the forest. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now, Jim, you would you would uh, you do kind of hide your name, though, and you got to hunt around a little bit to find your signature. You you often kind of well, put those in the trees in a little bit of in that fashion. Well, I try to put it in a spot that the uh, client will not put a block of, of copy over it. <laughs> but uh, I, I just try to pick a spot that I think will be good um, in in its reproduction as it goes through the steps of trail maps and and brochures so you're not so yeah some people might think you're trying to hide it but you're just doing it so it doesn't get covered up i love it um <laughs> how are you so do you do you don't do a lot of interviews and things i've kind of got the the gist or the the vibe that you know maybe a little uncomfortable talking about your art or or talking about yourself or discussing that sort of thing like quite humble human being is that a fair assessment well, I think it is, and I think also with my age, I am not as sharp as I used to be, and, and so I uh, don't always come up with what I want to say at the time that I want to say it. But it's uh, I've always had a real fear of the camera, and uh, and I hate these Zoom meetings. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. I appreciate you doing this one with me. <laughs> but uh, um, I've I've learned in the last couple of years and since the books come out I uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of put me out put it put out of your comfort zone a little bit yes you know but uh, but that's fine you should mark you would have liked seeing and we uh, we went to the Boston ski show uh gosh I guess that was a, a year and a half ago now <clears throat> went out there in the fall and late fall and that, it was a pretty neat experience um the night I guess it was the night before like the, the event really kicked up jim and i would walk around to different booths and we'd start looking at i don't know jay peak's map and a couple of folks come over and i'd say boy you guys got a nice trail map and they'd be pretty proud and i was like <laughs> he drew it and then they'd be like wait are you jim are you the guy and then so like all of a sudden like people are getting their picture with jim and it, it was really it was really neat it was cool to see you know jim who's obviously been such a um you know an icon in, in kind of working behind the scenes in the ski industry for so many years. It's been fun to see him get a little of the accolades, including, you know, getting uh, into the U S ski and snowboard hall of fame and the Colorado ski and snowboard hall of fame for, you know, his lifelong work. That's been for, as a, as a fan, as I said, I'm a fanboy. It's been cool to see Jim get the, those accolades. Yeah. Cause he doesn't, you don't seem like the kind of guy that's going to go out and get them yourself. So maybe Todd was a good uh, addition to the team to kind of oh, direct, di- direct that, att- the, the, the well-deserved attention to you. And to be honest with you, like I've seen all the trail maps and I was always like, oh, they all look the same. And I'm sure I had seen your name, but I'd never put two and two together until I actually saw the Kickstarter about the book. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, definitely that makes sense. Like, absolutely that makes sense. Um, so thank you for putting that together because, like, um, like I said, I'm a fan. And it's it's neat because you're that you're that celebrity or that icon that nobody knows about. No, no one knows anything about well, I want to thank you and all the skiers out there because you made me. I had to, I had to do it for you guys. Well, we wouldn't have known where we are going if it wasn't for you. So maybe we wouldn't have been skiing anyways, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what's the most, um, what's the most interesting way that you've seen one of your maps uh, portrayed? Like where, like on something or su- put somewhere? <laughs> well, I've seen them on briefs and shower curtains and you know. briefs as in like undies. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you don't have a pair? No. Are they going to be for sale on the website soon? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 mountain would you put on those? You should though. You could do like yeah. You could do like a. You could sell those to like the resorts or the the bathing suits, right? Well, well, what it is is the resorts will go out and they'll they'll uh, get their maps put on something like that. Somebody will approach them and they'll. They'll uh, give them the okay, and <clears throat> and suddenly there's a there's some briefs out there. <laughs> so say say I personally was like, all right, it's cold out. I want to get a dog. I want to get my dog a coat, a dog coat, and I want to put 
I want to put Grouse Mountain or Whistler Blackcomb or whatever on that coat. Would I have to go to Whistler Blackcomb and say, hey, or should, or do I have to go to you because you hold the, the rights to license that out? Well, you'd have to go to the ski area if you wanted the trail map with the names on it and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just wanted the image without all the trail names and 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 different symbols, well, I, I suppose you'd come to me. Uh, that's so that's interesting the 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 separation so like the 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 art is yours but right. then once they put the names on the runs and stuff it becomes their property or some or sort of so to speak right that's a residual copyright oh, okay interesting interesting so um you're back in the uh, you're back in the studio yep you've got the blueprint on the wall and that's okay. the stage uh big you know, 30 by 40, you said, how long does it take for you to paint one of these resorts? Well, a ski area like Black Comb Whistler is, is going to take me uh, three to four weeks to actually paint it. Um, and is that you just putting in like a work day, like eight hours a day sort of thing? Oh, yeah, or more. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot of time to paint those trees. <laughs> now, I do really love to do New Zealand ski areas. With no trees, no. yeah, <laughs> no trees. It's all in the alpine. Uh, have you yeah. ever have you ever been to New Zealand? Have, did you go? Yeah, been to New Zealand once and Australia twice, and took my wife both times, and we had a lovely time. Isn't it? Isn't it lovely? I'm a big, big fan of uh, of New Zealand ski areas. Um, and every tree's the same. Hey, it's not like you if you do every single tree by hand. It's not like you have a stamp or anything. It's just one oh, after no. the other. How many trees do you figure you've painted in your lifetime? Oh my gosh, and, and I, I countless. <laughs> I have, yeah, I, I I suppose maybe you could get a forester to estimate how many trees there are in this uh, square square mile that you're doing or something, and then maybe you could uh, work out a a, a a system to count all of them and all the paintings. But I, I have no interest in doing that. <laughs> no, I don't either. <laughs> so <laughs> you say, like, you know, you, you put in a full day, like three to four weeks. Like, do you have – uh, a specific routine like do you get up and take your time in the morning and do you paint during the day are you more of a, a, a nighttime painter guy like how, what's your what's your process like in a day of of like getting into this getting into the studio yeah well in the early early years it was uh up at dawn and and i just go down and get started and and i, I it'd just be like a day at work you know i mean i i was devoted to it and um uh, and, and there other distractions occasionally sure you know i have other distractions uh working out of the studio at home but uh but pretty much uh, a, a normal work day and and longer in most cases uh weekend hey, too. Hey, jim tell them tell them uh, the story about the um when you were really doing a lot of maps and you, and you were, you know, and, and Jim, you paint that, what well, you paint the shadow and then you paint the light side of the tree and the dark side of the tree. So Mark, he's not just painting the tree once he's painting it three times, every tree he's done. Talk about how you uh, supported your arm. In, in yeah, I was about to ask. Yeah. Map making years. Thanks for bringing that up. Cause I was about to ask. Okay. I hold this arm up like this so much. And uh, I'd been painting so long that, I really started aching, and then the arm was, um, I was losing it. So I, I hooked in the ceiling a hook and put a, a sling down, and it it was just right to just put my arm right in there, to see. So I had my sling there, and I could paint, you know, and so. So you created a brace with, like, basically supporting your elbow. So you <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you ever had any like you know carpal tunnel issues or anything like that with with the painting? No, my hands are uh, uh, getting to the point that arthritis is starting to set in a little bit. Uh, I have some. I have a trigger finger, and uh, but nothing nothing like carpal tunnel or anything like that. Well, that's nice. And then so another question I had too is like you said that I'm um, uh, sorry. What was your your mentor's name? Again, Bill Brown. 
Yeah, Bill Brown. So as I said, uh, a friend of mine said, oh, I've met this guy, Bill Brown, who did uh, Sun Peaks here, uh, near here in Kamloops. Now, are you the last of like a dying breed or do you have a, a protege or have you talked to someone or are you looking or have people reached out to you to say, hey, <clears throat> is there someone, is there a, is there someone that is going to follow in, in the lineage of trail map painters? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Red, Red Smith is, uh, um, out of, out of Bozeman, Montana and, uh, had, uh, looked me up and wanted to know if, uh, if, uh, I would mind helping him a little bit, get in, getting into painting, uh, painting them by hand. He had been doing them by computer before. And uh, his image was probably the best that I'd seen done by computer. Uh, So uh, I was was very glad to help him along. It was at a stage of my career where I was, I was uh, winding down and, uh, and happy to have somebody that was interested in it to, to carry it on, carry it forward. So, and, he, and he's doing quite well, really. Um, yeah. I, I think whenever I, um, you know, whenever I met Bill Brown, I was trying to do everything just like Bill Brown did it. And Bill said to me, he says, look, you know, you got to find your own style and, and work your own style. And uh, so that, that really freed me up a lot. And, and that's the same case with Rad. He, his style is different than mine, and uh, it doesn't mean that it's uh, a better or or not as good. It, it's a uh, it's a unique style, and, I, and he's got a very pleasing image that he's working on. So, I'm quite excited in what he's doing. Are Are you guys competing for work yet? Uh, I'm pretty much turning everything over to him. Oh yeah, yeah, I am. Just the extra, the, like the the extras, and does that disappoint? Does that disappoint anybody who's like, "Oh, sweet, we're gonna get Jim to do our map," and you're like, "I don't have time, so I'm gonna give it to this kid." Does that disappoint anybody, or does that have you had any any feedback on that? I, I haven't had any real feedback on that. Uh, Rad has a very good site, and uh, and he has some very nice samples, and and uh, you know he, uh, he he can. I don't expect him to fill my shoes because I didn't try to fill Bill Brown's shoes. We just are individual artists that uh, have a style and, and uh, we move on. So the craft is, is literally in good hands then. I think so. I, I just, I, I hope that, that, uh, that the resorts, and, and I think the book helps this. I think the book helps the resorts realize that the image is important. People do relate to these images. The, uh, that's why the book is so popular is because of what I painted is attractive and people like to see this image. This image is, is represents their, their mountain. It represents their slopes, represents their resort. Um, uh, and why have a poor, image out there that that is uh, being exposed um, um, uh, thousands thousands of times a day you know you should have a good image and that's what i really strive to do that's awesome i love the idea like the appeal to me personally is being able to see all of those resorts in one place Right, you've seen all of them. There's really nowhere you can go, not not even a website where you can see them all one after another, after another, side by side by side. Whereas when you have this book, you're like, oh, what is Breckenridge like? Oh, what's Alta like? Oh, I've never skied Big Sky. Oh, that's cool. Look at this. You know, like I'm going to spend a lot of time. Well, that's uh, that's another reason why the book is so good is because it's a dream book. It's a uh, it's a book that that uh, you look at and you dream about your next trip. Exactly. Is there is there any uh, are there any that you haven't done that you want to do? Like, is there a um, like a desires list for yourself? Yeah, there, there is. I mean, I, I wish that I had done some that 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 escaped me. You know, um, but now at this stage of my life, I'm pretty much satisfied with what I've done, and and uh, you know, ready to turn it over. There may be a few more. Yeah, I hope so. So, Todd, what's uh, what's next in in the plans for uh, the James Nehu's um, empire? 
<laughs> I'm pretty excited about the sketches that Jim has done. It was, you know, a conversation that Jim and I had maybe six months ago or maybe a year ago. And I, as Jim mentioned in his process, his, his sketches are so detailed and so incredible. And, and even, you know, his final art is almost photorealistic. So you got to get pretty close to it to realize it's not a photo. So uh, the sketches are, are very clearly, you know, much more clear, even from a distance, they're by hand. And so Jim and I just started talking about, you know, what would it be like to have the, you know, the, the great American landscapes? Like, what would it be to have Yellowstone and Yosemite and all these other places similar to the ski areas that people just connect with, you know? And, and I think um, that's pretty fun. And, and Jim, um, you know, with the Wind River Range in Wyoming, the Grand Tetons, I mean, there's just so many beautiful landscapes out there. Um, it's been fun to kind of see Jim uh, build that out. And uh, he's always kind enough to ask me for my opinion and lets me, you know, put a couple ideas here and there. And we got a great relationship where he's like, yep, I love that idea. Or nope, I think I like it just the way it is. And it's that's been for me as, as someone who appreciates design and, 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 and a lot of craft. It's been uh, just fun, very fulfilling to be kind of a part of that as these next set of images come out. That's cool. Hey, Jim, do you have a specific, um, do you have like a, like a set of like, uh, artists, like inspirations for yourself? Do you have like favorite artists or favorite painters that, that really speak to you? Like, you know, inspirations for yourself? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I've, I've reviewed a lot of different artists and, and, uh, and their work and admire it. Um, you know, I, I don't really, I didn't really study art, uh, and and I think because of that, I've just kind of come up with my own style, and and uh, and and I've just kind of uh, been on my own. I mean, uh, uh, trail maps are certainly different than than what you would see from a famous landscape artist, and uh, and so you're kind of carving your own road. Um, but but like getting back to these sketches and and uh, and, and I can remember, you know I uh, I've been in so many places and I got so many photographs and I've got all these photographs on my computer that I want to get back in and paint and uh, it, it just beautiful places and, and tremendous and I stop in a, in in an area and say wow I want to paint this so I'll. I'll photograph it and and I'll have a hundred different photographs of this one place, including photographing down to the bushes or the trees or, or just a group of rocks or something that I would incorporate into it. And they're all on my computer and I'll never get to them because I don't have enough time. Uh, you know, I'm 75 and, uh, there's just no way I'm going to paint, um, all these scenes before my time's up. So, I think that's why I'm really getting into these sketches because I can sketch it faster than I can paint it, um, and I and I've been uh, and I've been inspired with uh, the the fact that Ansel Adams, a famous uh, black and white uh, photographer, uh, his stuff is still very important and very accomplished, and people really enjoy his work. And so I'm thinking, all right, I I at least can capture these different scenes that I have in my mind of how I'm going to show them uh, um, in black and white and, and get most of them that I want to get done. It's interesting that you mentioned him because that's who I had in my in mind when I said, hey, do you have inspirations? Because he, everyone knows, who, if they know who Ansel Adams was, he's that black and white landscape, American landscape photographer. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely a lot of really fascinating parallels there as well. Um, so to round out the process talk, <laughs> so once you've got your painting finished, do you then have to go and take it like to a specific like shop and get it like scanned in a certain way? Like, so how do you get, how do you, wh what's the step once, once you've got it on the wall and it's finished and you've signed your name <clears throat> and you're ready to go, what are the next kind of steps that way? Well, it is to take it down to a photo, a, a photo lab and get a scan done. Nowadays, uh, I get a hundred meg, um, uh, capture, they call it. And, uh, the detail in it is more than I used to be able to get with a, uh, eight by 10 transparency and then scan that at 300 megs. And so I'll get the hundred meg 
and then I'll enlarge that up to 300 megs so that it'll go on up to mountain signage. And, uh, and of course, I'll go in there and work with the color a little bit, um, touch up some different areas and so forth. And then once that's done, I, uh, I upload it uh, to Dropbox and uh, let the client download it from there. Have you ever had any disasters where something just, you know, like transporting <laughs> the... Transporting Close. it or looking at or like for some reason you pick up the wrong folder of the wrong the wrong pictures and you do, you know, half a half of one mountain and half of another mountain and realize, oh, no, these are photos from two different mountains or like transfer when you're transferring the photo to the photo lab and maybe like, you know, drop it in a puddle or something like that. You know, have you ever had any like disastrous moments? Well, I, I, I have had a... Uh a case where the see I originally the first 50 that I did I was afraid my house would burn down or something and I'd lose all these paintings and so I would send them back to the clients and so uh, I found out that they're sitting in behind desk uh, one uh, had a uh, water damage to it uh, just sitting back there and so I, and and then they would get lost or they would end up in somebody's home and um, and not be used by the by the mountain anyway so that's whenever I started keeping them in my files and not allowing them to get out um, but there was another case where I got the direction of the sun wrong and uh, I was working from photographs sent into the ski area on a cloudy day, and I couldn't see shadows. And um, um, today, I would go in on Google Earth, and I could know immediately uh, how that mountain faces, which direction, and so forth. But back to, back in uh, 1988 or 1990, um, that source wasn't available, and... Uh, you know, it's a small area. And so I did my sketch. I sent it to him and he approved it. And uh, and it had the shadows in it. But whenever it was painted, he realized, oh, something's wrong. Those shadows aren't right. I got the sun coming from the north instead of from the south. And um, so, yeah, I had to go in and repaint that. So I was going to ask, I was going to ask, did that one get published? And is it in the book? No, no. Do you still have that original painting just kicking around? Uh, no, that was one that was sent back. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> you didn't keep it. Just, just uh, it's like, uh, it's like, um, you want a ba- baseball card gets printed with a funny blemish, and that's the one that's worth the most. You know? Yeah, right. right. Well, I hope there are, there aren't any of those prints around. Well, there wouldn't be because I caught it before it went to press. So fair enough. So, well, uh, nope. so so I'm going to ask Todd, where can people, they should, everyone listening to this podcast should have this book. Um, so what's the title of the book? Where can they get it? How much is it? Let's give, let's hear the details, please. Yeah, sure. Um, the title is uh, Legend, uh, The Man Behind the Maps, Legendary Ski Artist, James Nehues. So pretty fitting title, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, book is available on Jim's website, jamesneehughes.com, and, and that yeah, you can order it from uh, in Canada or in the U.S. and several other countries around the world. And then we also have Amazon set up in uh, here in uh, the U.S. So just, just two places. A couple of gift shops around uh, have reached out, and we've done small batch orders for wholesalers, but predominantly all direct to the consumer. Awesome, and that works out better for you guys. Yeah, it's a little bit more of a hustle. Though. I'll, I'll say we, we learned the hard way. Um, but I'm sure you're getting more than a buck a book. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Now, I have to ask you, are you guys willing for us to do a little raffle so someone can win one of your books through the Low Pressure Podcast? We'd yeah. love to give away one of your books if you're willing. Of course. Happy to do that. Yeah, be happy to. Absolutely. So if you're listening to this. Um, in the intro or the outro, we'll figure it. We'll talk after, and we'll figure out ex- the best way to do it that we can drive uh, drive some eyeballs to your site, so people need to know. Because um, once they get a look at this, they're going to want one for themselves. So uh, have a listen to the if you've if already if we're at the end of this episode. So at the end, I'll, I'll I'll rehash it at the beginning. I would have talked about it, 
Um, and we'll see if we can get someone, someone to book. Uh, Todd, thanks for coming. Jim, it was an honor. Um, well, thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor to be there. I, as soon as, as soon as I oh, found oh, out, Oh, a little pressure. I got to tell you, we got a big one coming in this weekend. Oh yeah. Are you going to get out? Uh, no, I won't get out. I don't get on the mountain anymore. Not even. Oh, really? No, I, I, uh, was last time I was up, I had a quite a time getting off. You know, I, I'm an artist. I sit behind this uh, board and I paint all day and, uh, I don't have the control that I used to have. So, well, that's fair. But uh, I love, I love how you're enthusiastic, and excited for everybody else. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I think it's great. It's it's beautiful. It, I, I I loved it all the time when I rise up there because the scenery is great. The the uh, just getting out in the wild and and being uh, amongst the the great outdoors. You know, it's just wonderful. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And thank you for doing your part in bringing the great outdoors to the great indoors. Okay. <laughs> straight thank to you. the straight to the coffee table book. Um, so thank you once again. Uh, it was a pleasure. And uh, everybody listening, go check out Jim Nehues. Uh, and check out his Instagram account too, actually. Um, whoever runs that does a great job. It's one of my favorite posts because I'll go through and I'm like, oh, you keep posting up little different mountains. Which one is this mountain? And everybody starts chiming in. Is it this? Is it that? So it's uh, the Instagram account is, is, is a fun one to follow too. So make sure you go do that. Very good. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, gentlemen. I, I appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, it was great to meet you. You've been listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. This has been a Redmark Media production.